Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Not A Sheep podcast. My name is Narwhal. I'm here with my buddy, Matt, and we're also joined by Blue Lane. Yes, yes sir. I'm here. This is really exciting. Uh, Cole, first of all, where did the name Blue Lane come from? We got to know. <laughs> what does it mean? Because I've never known. Um, so basically, um, I had a ton of rap names in high school before I actually released any music and I wasn't even that good. <laughs> but um, none of them really had that much meaning. So people would always ask me, like at one point my rap name was uh, Coveta. Okay, Ooh. what is that? What is and that? I, I just thought it sounded cool. <laughs> it had no meaning. It, 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 it didn't have any meaning. Does it have to do with your name being Cole? Yes. Okay. Had to go, yes. Something like connected to my name Cole, but like didn't really have any like meaning outside of that. So I started uh, thinking of more names with my mom actually. And we found out or we didn't find out. I already knew that colors have like a meaning attached to them if you look it up. Okay. So blue, if you look it up is for confidence and loyalty. Oh. So I want to take uh, a lane using confidence and loyalty to my success. Oh, okay. So that's kind of like, that's You're how You're taking I, the blue lane. The blue yeah, lane, exactly. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like how, you know, like how certain words just have like colors that come to your mind. So are you blue? Uh, like yeah. <laughs> blue, I mean, blue like my Matt, Matt's red in my head. So I don't know what red Wait, stands I'm for. I'm red? Yeah, like every name just like has a color. I don't think like, like Kathy. That. What is Kathy? What color is it? Green. I don't know. I just said I, well, I was gonna say John's green. I, you think I'm green? But you also <laughs> were talking about how you were wearing a green shirt earlier. Maybe that's why. Mm. Oh, honestly, but, that's probably why. I okay, I'm gonna say a name, green. and then on three, we're all gonna say what color we think associates with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Stephanie. One, two, three. Yellow. yellow. Wait, did you Whoa. say yellow? I said yellow. I said oh, pink. Okay. You said yellow? See? Yeah, I said yellow. Why'd you say pink? I don't know. That's just, <laughs> the, I don't know. Um, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Color Blue <you> lane. <laughs> it all makes sense. See, I always wonder because there's like so many artists don't go by their name. Yeah. And like so many of them, I have no idea what the backstory is. Did you ever consider going just by Cole or like Cole Harrington? Is that how I, you say it? I was like actually like low key pissed at J Cole because it's like if I if I'm just Cole like it's like there's already one of the goats is J Cole yeah it's like I'm never gonna use that and they refer to him as Cole they don't refer yeah to him they're as like, like Jay or Cole anything. World whatever yeah. like that's not gonna work for yeah. me so I have to pick something else it's kind of like J Cole cornered the market on my name yeah, yeah. it's kind of funny sometimes I'll see like rappers with like I don't know they're like up and coming they have like fifty thousand listeners or something and their name is like like Q Cole or like, or they, it's oh, like something so yeah. similar or like something Lamar. Well, that's like something. with all the Lil's, like it got mm. kind of weird around like 2015 when all the like Lil Uzi Vert was blowing up and it was like, okay. Cause I always just think Lil Wayne, but, yeah. but now it's like normal to be a Lil. But the, it was normal to be a Lil before Lil Uzi. No. Like, yeah. Like if I even think about it, like there was at one point before it was Bow Wow, it was Lil Bow Wow. Mm -hmm. It was Lil Twist. Lil oh. Wayne. Lil Wayne wasn't even the first Lil. It's just no, like that's no. the one that comes to mind. No, but when there's I, think about it. I just remember thinking like everybody using that name. Yeah. Did you ever consider a Lil name? No. Okay. <laughs> Not a chance. Lil Lane. Lil, Lil Blue. Lil Lane. <laughs> Lil Lane. <laughs> um Okay. That's awesome. Um, so did you like in high school, you said you had a bunch of different rap names? Yeah. Wait, wait, wasn't. can you just tell us some of the other ones? What's the worst one? What's the worst one you had? <laughs> um Okay. Uh, I guess. You, uh, okay. I'll tell you some names <laughs> right. and then you guys can decide if or what in your opinion is the worst of those. Okay. Guys. Okay. <laughs> so like go for it. I'm not going to be embarrassed. Okay. Okay. First one was cycle. Like, 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 a like cycle. psycho, like C Y or like, is it like, Oh no, like P S Y Cole. <laughs> okay. 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 Cycle. And then the next one was uh coal drill. Cole, what, what, so the next one was coleslaw. No, <laughs> no, I never was that stupid. Cold drill. So like, what? It, what was the meaning there? Like no, I already. There's no meaning. To cold drill. Any of these other names? I just said my name and a word that I thought <laughs> sounded hard after it. Okay. Cold drill. Well, like, I could see that. Like, oh, like Cole dropped a new song. Like everyone, it, it's a cold drill. You know, if it's oh a, yeah, oh yeah. I haven't like, even thought sound about the that. alarm. That's, that's cold drill. I new song that. is out. I like Blue Lane better, but <laughs> yeah, uh, Blue Lane definitely stuck better. So there was like, a, oh, one of them was Sideways with a Z. 
Oh, Ooh, the, with sideways. The, the Z instead of the S. Here, here's the other thing is like when I first started, like, and we can talk about like kind of what kind of music I was writing when I started compared to now. But like when I started, all my inspiration came from like Eminem and Kendrick and J. Cole. And so like I wanted a name that sounded like hard like that like a hard but then, rapper yeah. yeah like a like a super lyrical like you know offensive type of rapper like it's very different music than the music i've actually released for the most part yeah and so like i when i started writing songs that were more about like girls and stuff like that i was like cold drill just doesn't really even fit like that kind of genre i feel like yeah mm -hmm. or like those kind of names sound more like an eminem type of thing yeah you know? okay, i'm like yeah. just kind of more intense or just not fitting the vibe that you yeah want to develop. exactly for sure yeah when did you like kind of make that transition into like changing your genre i guess well i mean not genre but you know but what like I mean. type of like type of rap that i was doing yeah i feel like um really what happened is I got like my first girlfriend mm -hmm. and then I was, I s started feeling like obviously emotions and stuff like that. And I was like, I want to see if I can write a song to make this person feel something. And, uh, like that was something that made music so much cooler to me was, uh, a lot of times you can rap and you can say stuff that's lyrical and that's like exciting to a point, but like the next exciting aspect for me is like taking it one step further which is like being able to mold somebody's emotion with yeah. your lyrics and so when i made that first song and that first girl heard it and she like had emotions toward it like that like changed stuff for me and so like that's when i started writing more music that had yeah like those kinds of themes yeah um, yeah so it do you feel like you kind of started writing music almost more for other people or to impact other people not originally okay. not originally and i don't know i don't know if i necessarily wrote it to impact other people but i definitely wrote it in my head thinking it would be really cool if i can share something vulnerable from me and like have somebody like relate to it like Oh, I've been through a breakup like this. I I've loved somebody like this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not really something that you can do with just like a purely lyrical rap. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. And then like taking, uh, or like considering the fact that I'm from Sammamish, predominantly white, you know, wealthy area. Yeah. Like you can connect and have like lyrical music. That's also like, you know, talking about like, growing up and like how it was tough and stuff like that. I don't have that same story. Yeah. And so it's like the main way that I feel like I can actually like influence people with my, while being completely genuine is like with stories of like heartbreak and stuff like that. So yeah. Something that is actually like something you've really been through and can yeah, yeah, exactly. actually For sure. On. And also like, it's not like we're kind of talking about your music as if you're more of like, I don't want to say like a singer, but like you're really rapping on your songs, even though like the, the heartbreak break one. So it's like, it's not like you're not necessarily a different genre than like a Kendrick. You're just talking about different stuff. I feel like, mm -hmm. and it's, it, I don't know if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I mean, sense, there's but. like, see, we're in a time right now where genres are blending so much where yeah. there's people that <clears throat> technically are considered rappers. But when I listen to it, I'm like, I don't even know if I'd call this rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then there's a lot of artists that will sing their are singers and then they'll drop a whole album where it's like a mixtape or something. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people do a whole bunch of different things now. For sure. Do you like the label? Like, do you consider yourself a rapper? Because I know some people are kind of weird about that. Yeah, like, I consider myself. They're a like, rapper. I'm not yeah. a rapper. I'm a music <laughs> artist. I'm a musician. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, no, I don't do that. I, <laughs> I'm definitely a rapper. Like, I definitely venture into a few different types of genres when I am making my music but like i don't have a song out where i'm not rapping and i don't feel like i would be able to consider myself anything else like anything other than a rapper because like all of my songs i'm rapping in it <laughs> yeah yeah no it, for sure um did you ever get like did people ever make fun of you or like your songs in high school like was <laughs> yeah. it 
playful stuff or I don't know. I feel like yeah. Definitely. It would be hard to release songs, especially in high school when you're like still learning it. Yeah. You want to put stuff <laughs> out there, but it's probably not the best that it could be. So like, what was it like releasing stuff in high school? <laughs> um, it's really hard for people to, cause like when you rap, like I'm trying to be genuine when I rap, but it's also like, there's some level of persona that goes like along with that. And so, uh, it's hard for people to like, you know, I'm, I was a very different person in middle school or like early high school or even late high school than I am now. Yeah. And so it's like when I started making music, it was actually like most of the, the most fun I was made of, like got made of, it was for music that I was like, hadn't even released. It was just like, people knew that I was a rapper and I'm a white rapper at a high school where a bunch of people try to rap and like don't actually do anything with yeah. it and so it's like people just put me in that like box and they're like yeah. oh cold drill like or whatever somehow somehow i would tell a couple people that like that was my name and then it would like get out and then people would be making like jokes about it or whatever yeah. it's like and really one of the things that's like stuck with me is like nobody cares about your success until you're like successful <laughs> like yeah 100 percent, yeah dude and like that's the thing where it's you don't really feel that until you're there like mm -hmm. people say it all the time how like oh like you know no one cared and then once i blew up they came back and like now they're fans and stuff but like when you actually experience it like True. i've never done it with music but i've had situations like that where i've like no one gave a shit and then like once things pop off, you get DMs. They're like, oh, like that was sick, bro. It's like, where were you like three years ago? I 100% yeah. have experienced <laughs> that. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it does amaze me how people's perspective, like changes the view. Like even I have a, um, one of my closest friends, um, his younger sister was making um, vlogs. She started in, in high school. Yeah. And I like saw her videos and I was like, Oh, this feels like kind of cringy, whatever, yeah. you know? And then she like, I was going through this year, like on YouTube with my girlfriend, like in between classes, we we're hanging out and like scrolling through her, like recommended. And this girl's face pops up. Like my, <laughs> one of my best friends, younger sisters yeah. and her video has like 250,000 views. Oh, is she like Dang. a legit vlogger now? And she like has like a legit following. It's like what a legit the? vlogger. And I was like, all, just even watching that video, like seeing if you, I see the 250,000 views before I'm watching the video. It's like my perspective of watching that video changes like so much. Like she might've been doing the exact same stuff when she mm. had 15 listeners, yeah. but now she has 250,000 and, and now I view her as a person that's worth 250,000. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, hundred so percent. And I think that's, it sucks that that's how people view th like because i do the same thing if i see a music video and it has 50 views on youtube i'm gonna your inevitably expectation assume is so different. that like yeah i'm gonna assume they're not it's not a good song or like they're just not popping or whatever but it you could listen to it and it could be an absolutely amazing song they just haven't blown up yet but then if i see a music video with a million views i also i just assume that they're good when in a lot of cases i saw a video that was on went viral on tiktok and it was terrible. It was so bad in like every aspect. And it had like, like literally millions of plays. Yeah. And so I don't know. It is <laughs> weird though. Like your impression of the quality of something depends on like, if people already care about it. Yeah. Yeah. It has to do with like lenses. Like I feel like you always, when you see like how many likes, views, plays something has, you view it through like a lens. You're like, if it has this many plays, like, I'm going in with a lens of like, this is going to be good mm -hmm. versus like, I see it with like 50 plays or 50 views or 50 likes. It's like, I'm going into it with a mindset like, Oh, if this person was good. They would have more whatever. So I'm going in with a, a viewing lens. that's like bad, like a tainted viewing lens. Yeah. Essentially. And I feel like for anyone, any artist in any creative field, not just music, but I feel like the hardest part is just continuing to stay consistent and like grinding when, you get essentially no plays or no yeah when you're not getting anybody telling you that this is great you should keep going like that's the that's when it it comes down to like do you really have it in you to keep going mm -hmm. yeah and do you really love it because because there's you, a lot of things you think you want to do and then if they don't pop off 
Yeah. You just you know, if realize you, you don't love it. If you really want to do it, like you don't need someone to tell you you should do it. Like if it's what you want to do, like you shouldn't look for that outside validation, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course it's, it's nice when it you, helps. It, yeah. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's great to do that. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like you, if it's something you really want to do, you do it even if you were like the last person on earth. Yeah. Is that wrong? To no. feel that? Like, would you guys <laughs> make music if there was no one on earth to listen to it? Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> so tough. You want to get deep for a second? Yeah, get real <laughs> deep. <laughs> like, I feel like you have to have a healthy perspective just on life in general when you're doing something entertainment related because you vacillate between two different things that I think are bad uh, either way. It's pride or shame. <laughs> And like, if you're doing really, really well, you get your chest all pumped up and you're like, I am the ish basically. Yeah. And so, uh, that's not a good thing because it cha it causes you to change how you act. It yeah. causes you to change how you are with other people. And like, I think that's a very bad thing. I think it's one of the biggest things that I struggle with, um, whether it be music, fitness, like any of that kind of stuff. Um, but the other, the other thing is shame. And so if like, you, people tell you that you're not good like are you gonna let that like ruin it for you yeah. yeah you know like and how much does that affect you does one person telling you you're not good really affect you yeah and i feel like that's if i was gonna give advice to anybody who's making music or doing entertainment it has to be like you have to be good with yourself mm -hmm. without the affirmation and like even if you're like hated on essentially yeah yeah, hundred percent. If you look at like, there's a lot of successful artists that have like millions of followers and millions of fans, and then they still go on like Instagram and look at the comments and see one person that says this is the worst song ever, and then they like freak out about it. Yeah, and that's like those are really successful people that like should know they're good at what they they do, but mm -hmm. like even they struggle with that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. that a really important thing is knowing that like what you're trying to do and I think a lot of times when people try and give advice, in my opinion, I think it's not helpful it, because I think as an artist, you know what you want to make and what you're trying to do from the get go. And I feel like so many times people will try and tell you like, oh, this was bad or this isn't going to work. Like so many times with our other podcast, Peak to Middle School, by the way, shameless plug, go check it out. <laughs> um, but like it's very out there. It's like not appealing to a certain demographic like i know i know a lot of people aren't gonna like it and like we've got so many like terrible me like hate messages but it's like i know what we're trying to do and i know that like what i want to build is going to work mm -hmm. and i know there's like a fan base for it and so i feel like i don't know do you guys feel like you have you ever got messages or like critiques from people trying to tell you like oh you guys should work on this especially or you should, you should people change that, that that don't even do music yeah and it's like at the end of the day you know what you're trying to make and what you want it to sound like because i've gotten a lot of that people like oh like it could be anything as small like why don't you like have more guitar in your music and it's like someone that's never made a song in their life to like someone being like oh you should quit rapping like it's all over the place for me mm -hmm. yeah i honestly don't feel like I've experienced that much like direct, like in the way that you just like described. Yeah. But I definitely think that uh, when you get those comments, you have to f figure out a way to not let that like affect you so drastically. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard thing though, man. Like, I don't know. Social media is so toxic. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hate it, but like you, it's a thing that you have to utilize. If you're making content, if you're trying yeah. to grow anything nowadays, you really got to be like so active and it sucks. I hate it. I have a question for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Kind of revolving around that, that like statement. It's yeah. like, it's some people say it's easier now than ever to blow up because of social media and stuff like that. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that it's just more saturated. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, yeah. There's so many more, such a uh, smaller barrier to entry yeah. for like anyone to make music. And so at the same time, I don't even know if it is easier. Mm. Like I, I like have tried to like think about that and like is for people who do make it now, is the success hampered by the amount of people that are in the industry at this point? 
that's something that I've like always wondered. Yeah. What I think specifically in music, I think now it's probably harder to get to like the very top just because like it's so oversaturated. Like you have to be so different and just the best at like whatever it is. But at the same time, I think it's easier to like make it in the sense of like being able to make a living and mm-hmm. like whether that means you're a small artist because I think there's just so many more genres, so many different audiences. There's more people. So like more people are listening to music. So like I think you can there's more room for smaller artists, but I think it's just as hard or maybe even harder to make it to the very top. Just to clarify, are you kind of asking like, do you think it's because there's so many people doing it and it's so oversaturated, does that actually make it harder to grow nowadays than it was like back in the day? Yeah, like I guess the question is like almost like would you rather would you rather be making music in a time like now where the market's more saturated, but there's a lower Mm -hmm. barrier to entry or like in the past when it was like if you make it you're like really really making it yeah because it's not so saturated but it's harder to get to that point yeah no i i feel you i think it's it's tough because i i I think i probably agree with matt but like nowadays there's so many opportunities to make like a living you're probably not gonna pop off and be like making what j cole is but Mm -hmm. there's so many independent artists that have like 150,000 monthly listeners have a loyal fan base have a house and it's like they're not popping off but they got their fans and I feel like an artist like that wouldn't have been possible before yeah I feel like before you're either a star or you're not a music yeah because like especially if you're talking like 90s it's like you're on a label or you're like playing music at like I don't know for fun yeah like at at bars bars or something (laughs) Yeah. yeah so yeah man I don't know it's tough but I will say I think it's I don't know I'm I believe that if you really do have a talent and you are consistent with it I ha- just am hopeful and like to believe that the talent won't go unnoticed mm-hmm. and like hard work doesn't go unnoticed at a certain point like I think if someone is a ama- super talented and is grinding for like 15 years in my head Something's they're going to gonna make it yeah but like at the same time, I don't know. Like maybe there are people that are just insanely talented and haven't g- blown up at all in ten years. I think it's like they ought to be working hard, doing the right things. Because there's some people that just do the same thing over and over again, and it's clearly not going the right way. Yeah. And like they might be good at it, but it's if it's not making any progress, like hard work can only do so much, in my opinion. But. Yeah. No. For sure. Like if you're, you know, really good at making beats. But like you make 100 beats a day and never do anything with them. You're not going to obviously nothing. I feel like what you're trying to say, though, like the perfect example is somebody who like is making music like all the time, but refuses to put it out on Spotify and Apple Music and is like handing out CDs on the sidewalk. 100 percent. Like that's not going to work. Like in this day, you have to adapt with the day and age like that's not a valid strategy anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't get it when I there's a lot of up and coming artists that I feel like have like a little seed of talent. Maybe they haven't fully developed it, but like they're Mm -hmm. decent. Look for every artist out there that doesn't know how to get your music. It's literally just go to distrokid.com, pay like 15 bucks and you have a whole year of unlimited music. It's that simple. It's not that hard. It it blows my mind when I see artists like posting, Oh, I dropped a new song. It's on SoundCloud. It's like, (laughs) bro, no one, unless you're like a producer, no normal person uses SoundCloud. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one for me. <laughs> like well, you're, on you're big on you like SoundCloud, right? Well, so all of my like love for music honestly stemmed from SoundCloud when it was like at its peak. Like I had like I had created my own pages of like music that I would repost that had significant amount of followers. Yeah. Like that I was like, you have to check out this artist, whatever, and like also that's how i discovered like so many artists like like i know you love adrian stress out and whatever like Mm -hmm. i saw adrian stress out on soundcloud because someone else reposted him like back when he had like 800 followers like something like super small like and i it's not like i i feel like you actively listen to him more than i do Mm -hmm. but like i feel like i discovered so much through that and when i first released my music the first song i released was on soundcloud Mm -hmm. but I see what you're saying though. Like, I feel like even since I started releasing music two and a half, three years ago, like 
SoundCloud is becoming like less prominent every day. Like I feel like, yeah, now I don't know if I would. Yeah. But I still have all my stuff out on SoundCloud too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying like, don't release your stuff on SoundCloud. I'm just like, I think it's great that people still use SoundCloud. And I do think it's sad that SoundCloud is kind of dying. Like it almost went out of, like yeah. almost went bankrupt or whatever. But at the same time, like, I feel like if people want to reach a larger audience, you got to put it on the yeah. more mainstream platforms. You yeah. Know? Also, it's just like, might as well get those stream streaming money in. Like, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it's different. Like you can get paid on SoundCloud, but if it's like a remix and stuff like that, it's like a whole different process. It yeah. is. It is tough to know what to do with content now that you, you like love a beat. You want to rap over it. And it's like, not like, not yours. Like, mm -hmm. what do you do with that? Like, I haven't even ventured into the TikTok world yet. I know that that's an option, but I feel like it'd be such a life suck if I'm being <laughs> honest. Sorry if anyone out there loves TikTok. Wait, a what? A life suck? Yeah. What's that mean? Just like steal all of your time away from your <laughs> uh -oh. day. Oh, and yeah. just like, yeah. yeah, you just like zone out watching TikToks all day. Like, I just don't even want to like open, you know, that kind of box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sure. I haven't ventured into that, but like for, the, for me, like the extent to which I release it now because SoundCloud is not prominent, even though remixes used to be huge on That's SoundCloud. That's my favorite thing when like your favorite rapper like uploads or just rapping over like some random beat and like, oh, new song on SoundCloud, go check it out. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But but now the extent of what I can really do with that is like post of like a video of me rapping it on Instagram or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the market for like remixing songs has like shrunk significantly because people aren't using SoundCloud as much yeah that's true because you can't do a whole lot with them nowadays like you can't really make money off of them and i mean you can put them on instagram or on youtube but like it's not the same i guess yeah, yeah. it's harder to grow on youtube now especially just because mm -hmm. it's like an older platform yeah but yeah. like you still can but you i mean the last couple of weeks you've actually been releasing songs on instagram oh yeah yeah what had that been because they're songs that you just can't like like you don't have the rights to them or whatever yeah exactly so that's why the whole SoundCloud thing's a bummer because when I originally made them, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to release them on Apple Music and stuff like that. And so I recorded it and I just like never got around to posting it because it wasn't like my favorite music that I've ever made. Yeah. And like what it, what it looks like as a rapper who's like not that big is like when I release music, I'm like sending a mass text to like so many people in my like contacts on my phone and like through dms on instagram and you like i put in like a full day's work of like <laughs> advertising myself when i release a song <laughs> yeah and so like i don't feel very motivated to do that when it's a song that i'm not like so proud of like for sure yeah so it's like i have paid money to record these songs over beats that i don't have rights to and like i totally would have put them on soundcloud but like also SoundCloud's dying. And so I was just like, I don't want to bother spending all this time like texting people and like whatever with these songs. So I was like, you know what? I haven't been able to drop content in a while. Just like I'm about to put out three songs on Instagram and I've dropped two of them so far. So yeah, for sure. Has like, have people liked it or like, have you liked how it felt dropping it on, on Instagram? Like, was it cool or has it been like kind of weird? Uh, it's definitely different. I feel like when uh, people are scrolling, like scrolling through Instagram, like they don't take the time to stop when it's just an album cover a yeah, lot of times. For sure, yeah. Or it's like a long video. So it's like compared to even I dropped like... The Drake freestyle. Yeah, yeah. A, a freestyle over Pound Cake. Like when I put that out, like whatever, like 180 comments or whatever, something like way bigger and way more views compared to like a fully produced song i spent like because of like recording time probably like three hundred dollars to record like those two songs combined maybe a little bit more than that yeah. but like and i you know a few like five comments on each one like 400 views 500 views whatever it's like a lot of significant but i figured just like put it the content out <laughs> whatever yeah mm -hmm. well yeah, that's the thing that like it's such a bummer, but it's just the way it is. Like, like visuals are so important for music nowadays. Like, cause but people's attention spans are just so terrible that yeah. I think especially though, for some reason with artists, you have to be in the video. Cause a lot of people will make these really cool visuals where it's like, 
a lo-fi picture of like a car driving and they just don't do as well as like the ones where it's like the artist in there like i feel like there's something different about showing your face i have no idea why that is but <laughs> i don't either see but like it's because i think as artists like you guys probably don't care because you guys like are so deep we're in more it. focused on the music yeah like you guys care about listening to the music but i think someone who doesn't make music probably is more just in it to see like oh this like new rap song dope like i want to see the video or whatever well yeah and yeah. i think it's the whole thing of like when you if you're a fan of someone you usually know what they look like you usually like invested in their brand yeah. so i think it's just easier when you see them you can kind of your mind kind of like makes a judgment on who they are not that that's right but that's just kind of how it works i feel like it enhances it too yeah in a yeah. way like even if it's just a like stagnant video of me rapping in my car mm -hmm. like the fact I have like any sort of hand motions that resemble anything that I'm talking about just yeah. like enhances it like times 10. Yeah. And like, I feel like particularly I'm thinking of one video. It's like a John Bellion video where he's rapping on Instagram and he's like oh, in the yeah. studio, just like with Tommy. Yeah. Just like <laughs> yeah. going like this and like uh, the hype level just like bubbles up like, overflow mm -hmm. i feel like just because i'm watching how hype he's getting about his own stuff and his buddy's getting that hype too yeah. like yeah for sure it just connects on a more human level i feel like because mm -hmm. you can see the emotion and like their faces and yeah and uh, people think i don't know i think people think that they need some crazy visuals or they need like a legit production for it like most people don't care about some high production music video they just want to see someone like rapping over their song yeah and like a lot of people do like iphone videos just a stationary like recording like vlog basically of them rapping and it's like those can do just as well as like a full production for sure yeah but i will say this though in my experience putting stuff out the ones where it's been like you and me like sitting down like like you making like a more like animated style video those have done better but whenever i just like upload a cover of a song like it does absolutely nothing on instagram yeah I mean, I guess like it a probably, picture, not a cover, but yeah, 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 man. I don't know. It's, it's crazy how much of like art is not just about the art. It's about marketing it, which sucks because like at most artists don't want to like spend the time marketing. They want to spend the time making the art. Yeah. yeah. But sure. I don't know. Okay. One thing we forgot to do at the beginning, <laughs> cause we got so deep into this was talk about what we've been listening to recently. So this is something we like to do every episode. Just kind of maybe give you guys some artists you maybe Marshall's haven't heard of. Or check my phone out too. Is that yeah, one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, okay, so we all pulled up our playlist recently. Matt, what have you been listening to the last week or so? Okay, it's been kind of all over the place, but like I was telling Cole about this randomly enough. Like one of the artists I've been getting into is Black Bear, but like on the other side of things, do you guys know who Beam is? Beam. Beam. Like, like that's his name. Like no. B E A M. Yeah. No. Beam. He's like, know. so he used to be like a producer producing for a lot of guys like Andy Minio, but now he's like ventured into like being his own artist and he works with like a lot of like super dope producers now. But um, he has an album called 95 and that's like what I've been listening to. Okay. Is it new all. or like an old one? No, it's like, it came out last year, I think, but um, he's like super dope and super underrated, but like, he's like kind of on the rise he's got like a song with skrillex which okay. i guess skrillex kind of collabs mm. with everyone but what do you shit. think of what do you guys f think about producers who like will drop out like what's that guy pierre uh pierre pierre born, born? Yeah. like doesn't he he's a producer but then he also dropped a whole album like rapping right was he rapping on it i didn't listen but <laughs> i think that's him right <laughs> Here, here's, here's the thing i don't really like playboy cardi at all people i don't can, either people don't can hate it. me but i really can't stand play i like yeah. uzi but i don't like cardi and i know that like everyone kind of loves both of them yeah, yeah or that's a fan of both of them but i don't know yeah i've never really gotten to cardi's music that much but but i don't know i guess my point is um like when metro Boomin drops albums like do you like those yeah he's not on those though but he's not he's dropping the album but that's because he's produced every song on it yeah and no, yeah, like, yeah i think yeah. that's super dope though when like the producers are now kind of like being looked at as artists um but like because before the only guys you could really think of were like the huge names or like maybe a kanye because kanye was a producer that became a rapper yeah but like that's kind of what beam is like because he was just known for his production but he like changed his name i think he used to go by ty shane yeah but oh, that sounds familiar now. yeah he's i'm sure he's you've heard a bunch of the songs he's produced but um 
anyways like he has one of those what's it called the you know those videos you'll see of guys like freestyling it'll be like a, a colored background the mic hanging down be oh like a it, live it's called like the the color show yeah those yeah. youtube videos oh, he, yeah, he yeah, had yeah. a freestyle on there but, oh okay yeah that, cool. i love those performances mm -hmm. those are so exciting mm -hmm. but yeah um, that's, wait are they actually singing on that or are those like lip syncs i think they are i thought they were lip syncs for the longest time oh. but then i was comparing one of them because jid did yeah one. no they're not lip syncs oh but, wow. yeah that's but crazy. A lot of the performers are really good, though, so you think they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you guys ever listen to, you know, Mike Will made it? Yeah. yeah did yeah, you yeah. listen to it? So, or have you ever seen the Creed movies? The boxing yeah, movies? Yeah. Did have you good listen to the, he, yeah, he made a soundtrack for those movies. Yeah. And that album is so good. Mm -hmm. So if you guys haven't listened to it, definitely check the it out. The first one's good, too. I know, like, the second one has, like, a bunch of the big name artists, but the first one's super dope, too. Yeah. yeah. All right, Cole, what have you been listening to? So to like be in, like for an intro to this, like I have to put a disclaimer out that I probably listened to like 10% rap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is like very different than where I started. Like super, I was super into logic, logic, like under pressure days. Like that's what I was super into. Um, and like, obviously I still like J Cole and, and Kendrick and like, if they drop something like I'm all over it. Yeah. But like, that's actually part of the reason why I took a small break from doing rap music like over the last year. I mean, there's a few different reasons, but one of them is like, I got really interested in, in like artists like Chelsea Cutler, Jeremy yeah. Zucker, like people that sing and make you feel something. Once again, the whole yeah. feel something Bro, like vibe. I went to Jeremy Zucker. I saw him live in really? Dallas. He's so, oh, I dope. love him. He's great. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to go. Uh, he was supposed to come here this summer actually. And that yeah. didn't end up working oh, out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with that disclaimer <laughs> said, like I'm definitely like like Black Bear and like a lot of that kind of stuff, and I like pulling that kind of stuff into my own music. So like people that I've listened to recently um, is Chelsea Cutler, Jeremy Zucker, um, Lauv, Lauv, Love. Yeah, I don't. I, I've you. seen that name. Yeah, I know yeah. You're like about. love his stuff. Um, Does is he? Does he produce his stuff too, or is he just a singer? He, is he like for some eating? reason I thought he was like, I don't know, like a producer, but I don't think he is. What, I'm tripping. We were also talking about Eden, right? That's his name. Yes, oh, he's Eden a producer. Is so good, okay. dude. Eden, Isn't he a producer and a singer? Yeah, yeah. Eden yeah. does all of his own stuff. That's actually the thing that like changed it for me was like I'd only been to rap concerts and I went to an Eden concert and it just like shook my world. Like really, it's like not the same level of like everybody jumping like hype but it, it's like euphoria like i don't really know how to describe it like it's just a mm -hmm. completely different thing and i was just like if i could work with eden one day like that's yeah. what i like thought about um but yeah eden's super dope and then the couple other ones is quinn xci i just oh, yeah. dropped a new album that that's fire um and then i don't know if you've heard of this guy before but um he is like a top five artist for me, Gus Dapperton. I haven't, I have but I'll not. have to check him out. He, wait, wait. I've, I have heard the name. I've never listened to him though. Okay. Fun, funkiest dude ever. <laughs> like so weird. Like one of the first marketing things that he did was he like got a haircut. Like that's one where you put a bowl on your head and you just cut around. Yeah. The oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like just a funky dude, but like his music is also super eccentric, eccentric. What it, like it's just <laughs> weird but it's it's so good and he's releasing a new album soon and, oh. and his song first aid and post this is the one that i've been listening to the couple the last couple of days post humorous are like incredible okay does is he work with anyone we would have known like no no he's anyone? not even like close i don't feel <laughs> okay, like he's okay. even cl i don't even know if i've heard a song that's like somebody's on his song like all of his music is like his own stuff yeah, yeah i feel like and he reminds me of like a bedroom kind of singer i don't okay i don't really know that's like cool. he that's made too. a bunch of stuff in his bedroom yeah, yeah. have um, you ever heard of an artist named oliver tree i don't know i bet you you've seen him yeah he's, so from what you've just described about gus dapperton <laughs> yeah he also has a bowl cut but it's like a wig and he's just so eccentric and he has this he's built this character essentially since he got famous where Every single video, every interview, every public appearance, he has a wig and he has this same outfit. And it's this pink coat and these really big baggy like 
jeans what do they call where they get like wide bell bottoms the, yeah yeah he wear and he it's used like to be <laughs> he used to be a pro scooterer oh like, what like a scooter like a okay. skater basically he's like a pro so in a lot of his videos he does like these crazy skating tricks <laughs> but like my point is his music is amazing but he's so weird but what's so cool is that there's a lot of speculation that this next album he's dropping he's like completely changing his whole persona Oh. So that when this, I think I've heard rumors that when he drops this album, it's gonna be like the wig is gonna come off. He's Ooh. gonna be like a new persona. Dun, dun, dun. So that's, that's pretty high. Interesting. That's very interesting. I have to check. It you out. know, I've always had this thought of like, what if someone like Lil Pump like comes up, <laughs> blows up in the rap game like three years in. Like, imagine if right now like Lil Pump just dropped like a, a rap album, like a J Cole style rap mm -hmm. album, and he's like, oh, I've been able to rap this whole time. Like, I just wanted to get your attention first. Oh. Do you think that would be like a good strategy, or do you think all all his tattoos are fake? Do you think and he like, could get uh, respect after that, after everything he's done? I'm, I don't know. That's a tough one because I feel like the fan bases of lyrical rappers and like mumble rappers like is so like different now, mm -hmm. and I feel like he would a lot of people that liked him for his like oh yeah stuff that was like you know 100 man 100 man whatever yeah. like he's doing <laughs> like i feel like a lot of the stuff that uh if he changed that like his a lot of his fans wouldn't follow him for sure yeah yeah and I then people that. like me are already annoyed with him so, <laughs> so it's he like, basically just wouldn't have any fans. It honestly yeah, would be more difficult for him to break into like that side after that yeah yeah but yeah although i feel like trippy red kind of did that in a sense i did not he was like an artist that like heard the name like heard one or two songs and i was like no that's not for me and then like this last album this he past year i checked it out i'm like oh he's actually kind of dope yeah yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like I I've liked Trippy Red for a while, but there was a time when like he was lumped in with all the other mumble rappers, and I f I feel like he's differentiated himself I mean, from them. He had red hair, and his name was Trippy Red. No, I know. But, like, <laughs> like there was a time when every interview I saw, he was just like super drugged up, and I was like, "Is this guy even like alive?" Oh, but do you guys know the story about him being on God's Plan? No, no. He was well, like he was on God's Plan, but like then apparently he like played the version he had on his phone like at the club and like someone that's in drake's circle found out that he'd been like leaking it and so drake just took him off the song oh my gosh. and it's like i think it's drake's biggest song of all time like dang dude that's, that's actually such a insane bummer. yeah um don't go leaking music <laughs> especially right. not drake's <laughs> okay well moving on here i've been listening to uh matt you told me about no big deal Oh, yeah. <laughs> fire. Uh, dude, it's so fire. I'd never heard of this guy, but like... He's super dope. I, his song Parabolic that just mm -hmm. came out. Yep. And then also I found his song called Voss, which is oh, also I love super that good. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know, man. I just... You gotta check out Fieldhouse Freestyle. Fieldhouse? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will. I'll add it to the playlist. Certified. Um, Certified. Then World classic, <laughs> baby. Come on. Also, um, I found this band called Dark Rooms. Whoa. Don't know anything about them, but I found this one song called I, I Get Overwhelmed. That's super good. Um, Matt, you know this guy named Drew Famous? Oh, yeah. I've been listening to mm -hmm. some of him. Um, he's pretty unknown. And then Kid Cudi's new song. And then a lot of Mike Posner still. Oh, so, yeah. Interesting. Th there Mike we go. Posner. Haven't heard that name in a he, fat minute. Do you uh, like him and Black Bear have a collab album? Yeah, Mansions. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but I haven't heard besides that. I haven't heard anything from him since like please don't go like do you know that song like, that was a while ago like way long ago i didn't even know this dude was still like oh bro so it's funny you actually bring that up because so last episode the one that just came out, out on monday matt and i basically said we we're gonna start a series where we b basically review like an old album or like a throwback album mm -hmm. so the album i chose was mike posner's album from last year he actually did this thing um, I talked about it a little last episode, but I'll explain it to you. He decided he didn't like where he was like in his life and with his music. And so he literally walked across the entire country in a, it took him like nine months <laughs> and he bought like a RV and he walked from the P Atlantic ocean in New Jersey to the Pacific ocean in Santa Monica. And it took him like the whole year basically. And he got like bit by a rattlesnake and almost died. And he documented this journey, but then halfway through his trip he dropped an album that he re had recorded and it is like top three of my favorite albums of all time so whoa you should listen to it it's called to it's called it keep going 
Um, but all right. Okay. We're at 52 minutes here. Ooh. This is crazy. This has gone by so fast, dude. <laughs> we so basically much, just finished the intro. <laughs> there's so much more I want to talk about. We okay. kind of just did. I mean, <laughs> okay, Cole. Yeah. So something I like to ask people, well, we've only had one guest, but I want to make a common <laughs> thing of like, what is the dream for you? Mm. If like, if you could just do anything, what's the dream? Whether that just be in your life or like as an artist or whatever. I'm going to relate it to music since this is a music podcast. Okay. Um, but uh, so many people ask me that question and it's like a, it's like a really tough thing for me um, because at the beginning, uh, kind of how I was talking about earlier in the podcast, like my life has like changed a lot. I feel like particularly in the last like three ish years, like lots of transitions for me, like, uh, for example, one of the things is like, I recommitted my life to God, recommitted my life to Christ. Um, and so like, I have like Christian values that mm -hmm. I'm like pretty strong in now. And like, I, my like main goal in my life, uh, is like, I want a wife and kids, uh, that I get to spend time with and that love God. That's like my ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe this is too deep for some people, but like, <laughs> no, it's that's, cool. that's, that's dope. my, that's my real goal. And so I have to think about like, if I'm being honest with myself, what kind of life does a rapper live? Mm -hmm. And does that fit in my true dream of having a wife and kids that love God? Like, how does that fit together? Mm -hmm. Especially because like, I picture myself being, you know, like, super involved in my family's life yeah and it's like the only way to truly make a lot of m or like a successful amount of money off of music is to tour and mm -hmm. whatnot and that's like going on the road for like months at a time mm -hmm. yeah sort of thing and so i like really have to consider that so it's it's always like a debate and it's not a decision i have to make yet or anything because i'm not at that point yeah my current goal with music is to m make music where it's self-sufficient, where it's like the money I'm putting into it, I'm getting out of it. Okay. Yeah. Because then it's like, I can do it whenever I want and I'm not like stressed. Like I have a fan base, but I also am not like worried about it being my main income at mm -hmm. the same time. So it's like, I mean, who knows? Like, let's say I actually blew up. Like, I don't know what I would do, but like, I really have to think about that goal and fit music into that framework because like i don't think that i would truly be fully content and happy if i just said screw it to my like main dream in life and just went for this music thing like i don't think i would end up being the healthiest thing for me or like would fulfill yeah. me ultimately yeah so that's like a real deep look into no, my that's, personal that's life awesome. but <laughs> um are there any artists out there that have the same values as you that you kind of feel like are doing maybe potentially what you could do in like, like the same framework yeah like are there any artists where you're like wow they're doing that like they're balancing like their faith and their it life have and, to be the same sound or anything like but that. like is there anyone that you look up to in that sense that honestly need to do more research like looking into that because like even even who like people that would consider themselves like christian rappers and whatnot like First of all, that's not necessarily the lane I'm going. Like, I probably have, like, if you really, like, looked for it, you could see there's some, like, Christian themes and stuff like that in my music. But it's, like, I don't make music where it's, like, super, super obvious. Like, yeah. it's that. And so, um, but, like, even when I look at Christian rappers like Lecrae or No Big Deal, like, I still see that they're, like, on tour a lot and yeah. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. And so, like, I don't know. I... I almost feel like if I were to be put in that position, I would have, I don't know anybody as of now that I could just list off the top of my head. That's doing what I would hope to be doing. Yeah. yeah. So I'd probably have to like innovate my own like thing. Yeah. That'd be like different than anything el anyone else has ever done. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's not possible. Oh, for but sure. like, yeah, I, that's kind of what I think. <laughs> so. Yeah. I thought it was interesting how you said like, there's obviously you said there's Christian themes in your music if you look for it, but it's not like overtly like, you know, a Christian rapper. Would you say like it's similar to the way like NF kind of does his music? Because I feel like NF, if you look for it, you can tell he's obviously Christian, but like he's not. The thing with NF, though, is like he did come up like 
on a like Christian record label and like a lot of the artists the few artists he did collaborate with were like very Christian artists like Marty and I think he had a song with Toby Mac who's just like a Christian singer yeah but like the most people got their introduction to NF in like 2017 and at that point you would have no clue if he was a, a Christian artist yeah yeah so I, I was just gonna say I think that's different but I agree yeah would you, okay would well you then... consider yourself similar to sorry I didn't mean to cut you off I just what about like I don't know who's an artist where you would say like you feel like you're kind of a similar vibe to like do you have someone who you feel like you either look up to or someone who you'd like to same like be content like? wise like what your music is about I feel like content wise oh my gosh <laughs> that's so difficult for me um <laughs> and maybe there is no one because I know some artists don't even like to listen to people similar to them because they don't want their kind of vibes to rub off on each other no. Yeah, there's a couple people like if you go on Spotify and you have enough people that like listen to you, um, which I think I've met that threshold, like they will have like people that are like related to you, like people who listen to you also like often listen oh, to these yeah. people. I saw Sorry. that on your Spotify. Yeah. yeah. So like, <laughs> honestly, I don't know how much I believe in that algorithm. Like to me, it sounds kind of, it feels kind of BS because like I look at it and it's just like nine white rappers. I will I'm say like, this. I saw Jerome was one of the artists and yeah. he, he follows us in the podcast. So shout out to Jerome. <laughs> oh, sick. <laughs> Jerome, we're the same. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's funny. But like, I've like, I don't know if that's really like accurate because yeah. like, I feel like there's no way that just all the people that are like similar, like themed music to me are just white people. Dude, like, yeah. that's a whole nother conversation. Cause do you remember when we were talking about, I, I showed you that podcast that was like, the description was like finding just the new gems in hip hop. And I went through it. Every single artist was a white rapper. Yeah. I'm like, that's just like not how it would be if you're just looking for the best new music. Yeah. Especially in hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Man. Um, Okay. Well, I don't know. I, I was just curious. Um, do you, do you guys both, this is for both of you. Do you feel like, are there artists that you have in mind as like a favorite artist that you try to model at your music path after, or do you guys just try and kind of do your own thing? You can go for it. I'm trying to think for me. I mean, there's nothing like specific where it's like, I want to look sound and talk about the same stuff as this artist yeah it's it's more like song to song i might be like okay i'm kind of getting some inspiration for like a song that like maybe let's mix in some i don't know like john bellion meets whatever i'm listening to like yeah. that kind of inspires it yeah. sonically but um i've never been like i don't know I just want to talk about me. And to be honest, there's not a lot of artists that came up and like have the same life as me. So like, yeah. I don't think I'm just naturally going to relate to yeah. a lot of the guys that are already out there. It could be the fact that I don't listen to a lot of people that are like very similar to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like I said, I listen, I make rap music. I'm a rapper, but I listen to 10% rap music. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I like look up to like Chelsea Cutler and Jeremy Zucker, like, Honestly, the visionary music group like label, oh, yeah. all of them, is like just like insane. Like, first of all, that little side tangent, that label is like one hundred percent different than what it was when it was started. Yeah, it had people like it was Logic, like this artist named C. Dot Castro who had a falling out with Logic. Yeah. Um, this artist named Quest who now goes he by Sylvan LeQ, who oh, was like one of my what happened to him. <laughs> yeah, he's one of my favorite rappers. Uh, of all time his song best me is incredible and then uh it was john bellion yeah um and it was like john doesn't really fit in to that like group of the artists that were on there because yeah. they're all like super like under pressure vibe like logic lyrical rappers yeah. whatever and then they like switched up dropped all those people except for logic and john and now all of them sound like john bellion and sure. logic's the odd man out yeah it's so weird um, that happened and i think that's I mean, at least for me, if I had to pick like a label that has the most artists that I enjoy listening to on it, like Visionary is probably it. Really? There's, yeah. there's so many for talented sure. artists that at least fit kind of my like genre. They're the vibe that I like to listen to. Yeah, I could totally see that. 100 Like th for me, that is 100% <laughs> like accurate. The dream. The yeah, dream. exactly. Um, cool. All right. Well, we're at like an hour 
probably like an hour into this episode. So I think now would be a good time to hop into some performances. Yes, sir. So yeah. um, do you want to tell the people what the three different songs you're going to be doing are? Okay. So the first one I'm doing is a What's Poppin' remix, but we don't want to get copyright <laughs> infringement <laughs> problems. So we're going to use a, a tight beat that's like very like similar, uh, similar feel, but um, just no. That's why I say what's popping. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, the second one, I'll slow it down, give you more of a taste of like what I call lyrical love music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's more like the style of music that I, I make frequently um, that I like, like to, you know, make people feel stuff and, and whatnot. So it's more like f- relationship oriented. And then the third one is back to like more hype. It's a song that I wrote a hook to and uh, a little bit of a verse. And so we'll just like throw that in there for a little bonus. So. Okay. Yes, Are any of these like, like any of these verses or anything like been released before? Or are they all just like nope. just fun little? Okay. Yeah. They're, they're um, obviously the what's popping one's never been yeah, yeah. released. Um, and then the second one, the second one's honestly just like I had a day and I was like feeling some type of way. I went in my car and this is how I write all my music, sit in my car, blast the, mu- the instrumental. And I just like write my feelings in the notes app on my phone. Okay. Uh, and so it's like a one, like sit down for an hour and a half, just like rap through. And then a, the third one is like, I wrote over a little bit of time and I actually own the beat for that one. So I might get released at some point. We'll okay. See. All right, cool. So this is Blue Lane performing his What's Poppin' remix. Yes, sir. This is a Not A Sheep exclusive. Let's go. Yeah. What's poppin'? Got a self-quarantine, so I'm locked in. Been days, opportunity knocking. Just to ride a couple rounds in the cockpit. So I hopped in. We rockin'. Been a minute, but I wouldn't want to stop it. Cause nobody gave me a rocket. I could blow up on the ground like a poppet. Whoa, I ain't went off for a second. So people been asking and checking. That blue lane is still making records. The answer is yes. I just been collecting checks. So I got money to invest. Also, I was feeling stressed. God told me I needed rest from the music I possess. Now I'm hot and off the press. Bless. I'm back with a vengeance. My pen gets active with a lack of attendance. I'm so offensive. Been a passion endless like a master sent this So I had to pen this, you can't defend this Cause I got no limits, made a beast from remnants Where I rap each sentence, we the rap descendants Huh, what's poppin'? Got a self-quarantine so I'm locked in Been days, opportunity knocking. Just to ride a couple rounds in the cockpit So I hopped in, we rocking. Been a minute but I wouldn't wanna stop it Cause nobody gave me a rocket I could blow up on the ground like a poppet Whoa oh, hey, that's let's fire go. Let's go Oh my god that's Bro, you killed that <laughs> Yo, that was so fire. Um, wow. Oh my goodness. How did that feel? Did that feel good? Yeah, I felt good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll use it. Um, <laughs> um, all right. Wow. Yo, I will say these What's Poppin' remixes are some of my favorites ever. Bro, the I heard beat? Justin Bieber's on the next one yeah, that's coming out. <laughs> on his Instagram story? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wait, is that real? I or think he, so. was he just, oh, I thought he was just kind of like messing around singing over it. I mean, who knows? We should see. We should get a Blue Lane Justin Bieber remix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah do you, do you listen to Jack Harlow at all or not really? You just like that? Yeah, I like Jack Harlow. Okay. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, we might as well get right into the next one. So which one do you, which one are we doing next? Um, is What's there a name the for this song? Smooth? I don't have a name. This is just kind of a, a verse, I would say. Okay. And well, I guess the beat's 3 a.m. So we're going to say 3 a.m. 3 a.m. I don't know why I'm so consumed We're hoping you will walk up to me in the open room To get to know me, kiss you slowly, this a poet's tune Want you to hurry even if my doors ain't closing soon I know I'm rushing it, probably just need to hush a bit Guide me right to your heart and I'll follow like you was ushering I must admit, in my past relationships I always tried to muscle it With my own strength and I could never give enough of it and now I'm stuck a bit I mean I've been so open I know my past broken I know I laugh hoping it would make the subject lighter Even when somebody hurt me I'm a lover not a fighter Damn, and that's just me being real And now you have some context on the ways I really feel But now I understand why you probably need time I'm trying to get right with God So I probably need mine like 
Oh, that's dope, goodness, bro. This dude, that's a vibe. <laughs> Powerful, bro. <laughs> that's sick. It's crazy. You just can switch up from that to this. Yeah, yeah. Heck versatile. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I like almost start sweating because I like realize I'm looking at the lyrics for "What's Poppin'" as the I'm about to start. Yeah, I was yeah. like. What's the lyric again? <laughs> at the first Coming was pop. <laughs> yeah. No, I Wait, saw him like pop. it was. It was right about to be when you start, and he was like on his notepad. I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> we on the rise, yeah. Uh. If I'm on the rise, you know I gotta bring my crew. Everybody always sliding through. When I drop, it'll be a monsoon. Follow dreams, or it's gonna haunt you. On the rise, you know I gotta bring my crew. Everybody always sliding through. When I drop, it'll be a monsoon. Follow dreams, or it's gonna haunt you. Everybody on the same talk, I ain't moving with the same walk Like a new shoe with a plain sock, this blue drip called rain drop Y'all dry, need chapstick, over competition, I backflip Tryna spark it up, but can't match this, I'm Zion to your draft picks Now you all lined up, I was down on my luck Then I went off my gut, now I'm all fired up You can never even handle my team, I've been trying to stay away from the scene I've been searching for a way to the king, I've been following and chasing a dream Doing my thing, now, this is my time, whole gang with me like a drive-by And they all got me in their top five, said I'm on one, but I'm not high Trying to knock wide Open the gate, looking cock eyed right at their face. Don't abide by, I'm moving in place. Hell nah, I ain't losing a race. On the rise, you know I gotta bring my crew. Everybody always sliding through. When I drop, it'll be a monsoon. Follow dreams, or it's gonna haunt you. On the rise, you know I gotta bring my crew. Everybody always sliding through. When I drop, it'll be a monsoon. Follow dreams, or it's gonna haunt you. Oh, Ooh, cool, that's a banger right there, bro. Yo, I need to know what was the chapstick line. I, I need, heard that I need, too. I need that a, stuck out to me. I need <laughs> an explanation. What was that? That was awesome. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. I'm like, did he just say chapstick? Yeah. The if I slow it down for you, so it starts. Everybody on the same talk. I ain't moving with the same walk like a new shoe with a plain sock. This blue drip called raindrop. Y'all dry, need chapstick over competition. I backflip, try and spark it up, but can't match this. I'm Zion to your draft picks. Oh, oh call, call oh him lyrical. <laughs> oh, yo. I love it, bro. Oh, the my bars. God. I can't believe you never had lyrical. This is your name. That's no. what I was thinking the whole time. No. <laughs> lyrical lemonade. No, that's um, wow. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. That was super fun. Um, you know, I, I look forward to these performances every <laughs> single time. Um, literally, like, I'll go on YouTube some days, like, while I'm working, and I'll just play freestyles from, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, those uh, – the different podcasts like the juice road one where he goes on for like two hours and stuff. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah first of all that's insane how how is that even possible i don't they just keep going like do you that. think it's like is anything written beforehand or they just kind of wing it I, he <sighs> he's got freestyles in the studio he's so. got to be pulling from a few writtens though like he's definitely like either a lot of like little like secret if you if you are with somebody and they're freestyling and they've been freestyling for a little while like a lot of times if you're a new audience, they freestyled that line last week. Oh, yeah. You, you have your go-to. Your go-to. When you can't think of anything and you're thinking of the next thing, it's like I have like filler, four bars of filler like for, for sure. all sorts of different Yeah, things. but the, the best ones are when they like, you know, they do the little tricks where they like start shouting out people in the room because then you're like, oh, snap, the whole thing has to be off the top. Yeah, exactly. When it's not, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Well, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, this has been super fun. Cole, thanks for coming on the show. Where yeah, can no the problem. people uh, follow you if they want to, you know, follow your music or see what you're, see what you're up to? Um, I am Blue Lane on Instagram. Um, Blue Lane, any platform, platform, <laughs> platform that you desire. <laughs> so cool. Um, Matt, where can I follow you? You can follow me at the Matt Mog on Instagram and Twitter. And yeah. Yep. You guys can follow <laughs> me at Hey Narwhal on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, oh god <laughs> also uh i just want to give a plug to our other show that's part of the ferrar productions family called peak to middle school uh you know this is our rec recording studio here uh we spent a lot of time and just effort in creating a bunch of different high quality podcasts so if you guys want to check it out it's a comedy show uh it's hosted by me and my buddy kyle that'd be awesome also you guys should all leave a review of yes. this show on the apple podcast app it helps us out way more than you think and we're going to do something special when we get to like 100. So it'll be special. If you guys could do it, it literally will take you 15 seconds and it helps us out a lot. So 
With all that being said, uh, Colt, thanks again. This was fun, and we got to have you on again soon. Yes. Yeah, I will definitely come back. So, so let's go. Me. All right, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>